Good morning, and I hope you've had a great weekend. This morning's reading is from Exodus, chapter 14, and is about the flight of the Hebrew slaves from Egypt. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, What have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chariots, along with all the other chariots of Egypt, with officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out boldly. The Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops, pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea near P. Ahiroth, opposite Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them, and I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Some people are never satisfied, are they? This story from around three and a half thousand years ago shows that we haven't really changed all that much, have we? Moses has risked everything by planning the audacious escape from Egypt. But what thanks does he get? Some of the people asked him, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. It's much easier to grumble about our lot than to take action. Moses must have been frustrated on two levels. He would have been cross and upset that some people doubted his leadership. But more than that, They were doubting in God's leadership. That's far more serious. Moses urged the people on, but listen to what he heard God saying to him. Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. That sounds like a rebuke to me. Time and time again in the Bible, we read how God surprises people with an unexpected response. And so here, In the middle of the most defining event in Israel's history, we read how God tells Moses to have faith in a very direct way. When we ask God to encourage us, we so often think about a warm response. But there's another more robust meaning of the verb to encourage. There's a panel in the Bayer tapestry of King Harold giving one of his soldiers a kick. And the inscription beneath it reads, King Harold encourages his soldiers. Sometimes, just like the Hebrew slaves, we need some more robust encouragement. And now let us pray. We ask, Lord, that we might always be ready to listen to your voice, however it comes, and be ready to respond when we, like the Israelites, need some more robust encouragement. Help us to be more like the man in the Gospel who declared, I believe help my unbelief, 
and to look to the future. Amen. We continue to pray for peace in Ukraine using a prayer from Christian Aid. We implore you, O merciful God, look with grace upon those who courageously defend their land. Remember the mothers and fathers, the innocent children, widows and orphans, the disabled and helpless, those seeking shelter and refuge, who reach out to you and to their fellow human beings, looking for mercy and compassion. Bless the hearts of those who have already shown great generosity and solidarity, and those who prepare to receive their Ukrainian brothers and sisters in their country's greatest time of need. Bring us together as your children, your creation, and instill in us your strength, wisdom and understanding. May you be praised and glorified, now and for ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. And now we bring all our prayers together in the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Stay safe. Our Monday evening prayers for Ukraine continue tonight at Holy Trinity Church. And remember that Richard Simmons will lead our prayers on Friday.